with how can one be free from sin and we're going to conclude this series by reading John chapter 1 and let me just begin um, that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life that which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, and we are writing these things to you, that your joy may be complete. This is a message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and the truth not practice in us. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is a propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to him, to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whosoever say, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whosoever keep his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whosoever say abide in him are to walk in him in the same way which he walked. Okay. Right. So as we've read John chapter 1 and 2 well we you well, know obviously we can go we'll go further into John chapter 2 a little bit later yeah it's a long chapter but obviously anyone who's listening please remember to read the whole chapter and in particular in this book read the whole book of John absolutely um, it's really important that you get into the word of God yeah um, but obviously for time we're just gonna stop here and then yeah. we'll Get into it a little bit later. Exactly. Can. And try to read the word for yourself. Get into the word. I mean, just don't trust our words. These are not our words, but you know, search the scriptures. Yes. Whatever we say to you, Look it try up. and get that revelation for yourself. Yeah. You know? And um, we're just here pointing you to Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ. We, 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 you see, we don't even put our face on it because we don't want nobody to know who we are. <laughs> we well, want you. We you get we, to know us, you probably won't like us very much. Exactly. Anyway, so there you go. <laughs> we, we are just a voice in the wilderness crying out. All yeah. we want you to hear is our voice. Find and this Jesus voice is. will po- is saying, go to Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And when you find him, serve him. Amen. That's all we, we want to say. Yeah, so. Um, so, the Bible is telling us that that which was in the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes and touch with our hands concerning the word of life. Now, we want to talk about, because we're talking about how can one be free from sin. Yeah. And we know that is the word of God that is actually going to do that. Of course. Nothing else has the power to uh, cleanse us from our sins. And as I said earlier, that is that sacrifice that God has you know, given to the world, Jesus Christ. And when you accept Jesus in your life, and let me just elaborate a little bit more about accepting Jesus, because, you know, many times people go to church and they lift up their hand and they said, I accept Jesus Christ. But 
I mean, Satan has been tricking people many times to say, you, you're accepting Christ by going to a church and lifting up your hands and your name is on the church roll and that's it. And then you come to church, yes, I pay tithes, I do all of this and da da da. So I accept Jesus Christ. And you know, this is, it's so far from the truth. Because accepting Jesus Christ is not doing none of that. It's basically accepting the truth, isn't it? It's, it's when you accept the truth. But for, first, before we can accept the truth, we have to understand the lie. Because you can't, you can't accept the truth without understanding the lie. Hmm. And you have to first understand that, hey, I am a sinner. And I am an evilest person. The devil may make you feel like, oh yes, you're a good person. Your mom told you you're good. Look at you, you're cute. They tell you all these nice things about you. And you feel that you're really good. You pass your exams, you have your O levels, you have your, your, all the different qualifications, and you have your degrees, and you think that, you know, you are quite, you're great, you're good, you're a good person, you're a law abiding citizen, you're good, you never kill anybody, you never hurt anybody, you're just good. But it's just like a whitewashed tomb, you are, because, you know, within you, there's no good thing inside of us. We are all born into sin. And you know what? If that sin don't manifest yet, you know, that doesn't mean that it's not going to manifest. It's coming out. It will come out. Because that which is in the darkness will come out in the light. We are all in darkness, my friends. And you see, before you can actually understand the light, you have to understand you're in darkness. And then before you can actually be free from sin, you have to understand that you are in sin. But Satan don't want you and I to know that we are in sin. He wants us to know, want us to have our righteousness. To say we are right, we are good. And majority of people today is saying that thing. I am good. I'm right. You know, I don't need anybody to preach me out or say anything to me. But the Bible is telling us that we are in darkness. And the way in which we can actually be free from that sin is to acknowledge that it is there. You cannot be helped if you feel like you don't need help. Someone that is, I think I was watching on the news, this guy had Ebola and he was, um, the British went over to Silurian and they set up a clinic. And so this guy wanted to walk into the clinic to be cured from this deadly disease. And when he saw the clinic, he actually was turning back. You don't want to go in there. And he was sweating. And they said, the news was saying it's like a time bomb. It's about to explore any time. And he was just walking away from the clinic. And I saw the nurse and all these different people were trying to bring him in to say, come, come, we want to help you. And it's kind of like what I'm trying to do. I am kind of said, you're walking away from the truth. I am here to help you, to point you to Jesus, because you're walking time bomb, you're going to be explored anytime, you know, and but that guy probably feel like there's no hope anymore. There's lots of people that die. What's the point of him going there? I probably just feel like he don't have Ebola, you know, but this is what happened. If you don't believe that you are, you're a sinful person, if you don't feel that, if you feel like you're perfect, you're not hurting anybody. That's really lying to yourself. Because you are, you will, you are hurting yourself. You are sinful. Right? And so to be free from sin is to basically acknowledge. So as I have been elaborating, you know, you can't say I have accepted Christ just by raising your hand. But you can say you have accepted Christ when you accept you are sinful. And Alfred, how many people today actually believe they are sinful? Most people believe that they're not. Most people believe that they're happy, they're good, they're in you know, right standing. They, they don't lie, they don't do anything that is bad. But before you can actually ask, get freedom from sin and remain free, you have to look at yourself and say, I am no good. I need Jesus Christ. And then when you realize that and you come to that conclusion, then only one thing left to do 
you were going to be broken and you're going to be contrite in heart. And you say, God, help me. And then, according to the word, a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. You only cannot be broken over something that you know you can't fix. You're going to realize, hey, there's no way I can do this. Jesus, help. And then he's ready to help you. When he, when he come now, he will, by you repenting, he's going to come inside of your heart. And he's going to drive out those imaginations. He's going to build himself his temple inside of you. Brick by brick, his word is going to build up in your mind. He's going to break down those old lies that the devil has been telling you. And he's going to build truth upon truth. And all these lies of religion, tradition, he's going to build that temple of truth. And there's a part in the Bible that said, The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. The Lord whom you seek is going to come to that place that you are building for him. Because you're going to be reading his word and he's going to build his temple. And when you build that temple, then the word of God will find rest. It can actually rest in you. And you know how the word of God rests in you? When you all want to do is truth. When you just want the word of God to be manifested in you. So this is how you are free from sin. Is to first acknowledge it. Then confess it, reject it, and then the sacrifice, Jesus will come in. And when his word comes in, he will keep you free from sin. And then based on what he has done for you, you will never stop worshiping him. And that is a glory because you know who you were and you now know who you are. And you are now going from glory to glory to glory. To glory and that is your foundation your faith is not building up on a church or your faith is not building up on a career your faith is on the rock the word of God mm. I mean I'll just add to this I'm just gonna read something from John chapter 8 um, and just talk a little bit about you know sin as well I just read it a few verses but obviously anybody reading please look at the full contents of the scripture Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came with him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, e as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out, one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? And she said, Where are those thine accusers, rather? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And I, I thought I'd bring this in just to elaborate the fact that there's a woman, she's been found out to have been sleeping with another man other than her husband. She's an adulteress. A group of people, namely the scribes and the Pharisees, and the local townsmen and so forth, mm. bring this woman to Jesus, and they start demanding that according, according to Moses, 
the law of Moses has commanded us, they said. Okay? Commanded us that this woman must be put to death. Okay? But what's interesting is that, of course, all of the people who came to this woman to have her put to death, they all forgot that they had sinned. That's right. Perhaps they didn't even think that they were sinners. That they had committed any kind of sin. <laughs> they were righteous. They believed in the word of God. That Abraham did. They said that Abraham did. Moses has given us a word and it's commanded us that a woman like this, mm. she should be killed. So they seem to be, to me, people who have some kind of godly thinking. Mm. You know, they like the Bible, they like the scriptures, they mm. like the word of God. So when you were talking just now and saying that, you know, the, the scripture declares that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're talking about even if people haven't lied or they haven't done this or that, there is a sin element attached to a person. Mm -hmm. There is sin is attached to your life one way or another. But what I found was interesting is what Jesus said to them. When he actually said to the group who've been asking what should they do about this woman, mm -hmm. Jesus actually said to them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Mm -hmm. It's only when, as you said, that the question of sin in your life is actually directed at you. That's right. That you have to actually take, forget all your previous Bible knowledge. Absolutely. Forget all your commandments that you say mm -hmm. you believe in. Forget all of your um, zealousness. Mm -hmm. That you have to see the word of God has come to you. But Jesus said, yes, the person who has no sin among you. Very interesting. Let that one throw the stone. Let that one. But the word of God has to come to you personally. Mm. You must be able to see and know your own sin. That you're a sinner. You must know. You have to you're... know that you've sinned. But they didn't. That, that, I'm putting this here because... Yeah. They didn't know, obviously, they couldn't have known mm -hmm. that they had sinned. Otherwise, they wouldn't have found themselves dragging this woman through the marketplace through the, with the priests. And there's a big gang of people, <clears throat> you know, they're moving as a crowd. They're a group. They're saying, we're right. She's wrong. And mm -hmm. we want you, Jesus, you know, to, 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 to deal with sanction it. Our us, actions. Us killing him. Yes. But Jesus is saying to them, I'll tell you what. Mm, this is interesting here. Let me... Yeah, those of you without sin, you, you do it. And it says that they all went out mm -hmm. from the eldest to the youngest. And he said that their conscience. own conscience. Pretty. So all of us have got a conscience. All of us have got something actively in us that mm. tells us the difference between right and wrong. Absolutely. But sometimes it takes something to make that conscience Pre direct to us. But you see, this conscience cannot be directed to us if we are not, if we have not come to the place. Well, I think of they truth. Well, they came to the right place because Jesus they came was, to Jesus. Jesus, and then truth stared them in the eye. Because what's interesting is that they've come to Jesus and he is the Jesus. one who has come to save his people from all their sins. From all their sins. He's the one who's come to um, free them mm. from sin. Because he said, if the son has made you free, you're free indeed. He's the one who can heal them of their sin sickness. He is the sin healer. He's the yes. sin deliverer. He's the yeah. sin cleanser. He's the one who's come to take away the sin of the world. Mm. So it looks to me, Raymond, that they, they got to the right place. Yes. But then they Only, kind of... But, but they actually walk away. Well, that's what I'm saying. They so got they, to they, the there right, are many people that there. come to the right place. Many people come to Jesus, the right place. And they come um, criticizing one another. I mean, and Jesus, he's, he's just saying, Jesus, don't look at me. Look at her. Jesus, don't look at I mean, me. Look at him. I mean, look at this church. Look at what that person. But the main thing that Jesus wants to do, Jesus don't really care about what other people say. Jesus wants to say, okay, Alfred, you. Yeah, is there sin in you? I and mean, that's all Jesus wants them to know, you know? Well, 
Isn't it interesting? What, what about Raymond, you, yourself? That he's asking them a question that they should have been asking themselves. Absolutely. Have I... Do I have sin in my life? Because one thing I've realised about God, Raymond, we can deceive ourselves for a very long time. Absolutely. We can lie to ourselves for a really long time. And teach that lie to others. But when <laughs> God speaks to you about your sin personally, your church... Your leaders, your group, your Bible, nothing will be able to help you at that moment in time. No. You, God is going to ask every single one of us, are you without sin? That's right. Are you without sin? Absolutely. He's gonna, that question is going to come to all of us. And from what I could tell, Jesus didn't actually tell any of them to go away. From what I'm reading, I, I'm no, looking no, very yeah, intently yeah, at yeah, the scripture. Yeah, he didn't tell them to go away. I, I don't see anything about Jesus saying to them, so you guys haven't got any sin, so you've got sin in your life, so off you go. They this, this, dropped this stone in, dropped this stone, and walked away. Because why would you leave from Jesus when he is the only one who can take away your sins? And there's something in this right They walked that, away with the priests. There's something in it about because the priests don't want Jesus. Do yeah, the, the <laughs> priest is just as sinful. Exactly, as they, because they, we read this in walk, Jeremiah. They walk away with the they walk away with yeah. the priest that because the priests and the, the the Pharisees they want to stone her. Yes. So, so so they walk away with the priests, and the priests don't want them to come to Jesus because if they stay with Jesus, the priests don't have a job. Well, Jesus is there to take away their sin. Jesus is there to heal them of their sinful nature. Jesus is there to save them from their sin. So he's not telling them. He's just saying, actually, anyone that's without sin, yeah, stole free. her. Yeah, yeah. And there's something else is, when you're a person that you're free from sin, mm. you don't want others to die because of their sin. Absolutely. You want them to be freed. But isn't from that sin? isn't that interesting that <laughs> people who are free from sin they preach about hell a lot. Yeah. They preach about condemnation. Well more than that, is. they demand death. They demand death. They demand death. This, they, these guys were demanded. They ex said exactly. the law of Moses, the law of Moses has commanded us to put that to death. We that she that such should be stoned. But you see, when, when, when the law of God in you and is written on your heart, you have such love, compassion and mercy that you are not really preaching about death. You are now saying to people, come to life. Yeah, Jesus is life. So exactly. this, the reason why I brought this in about John, because we're talking about how to be free from sin. Mm. And being free from sin is more than possible more than likely, it is clearly what God wants of our lives. And I thought, just bring this to time with John to say, look, for those of us listening, Jesus is the one who can heal you and cleanse you and keep you from your sin. He's the one that does it. He's the one that empowers you to do it. Amen. From what I can see here, this woman is clearly uh, an atrocious sinner. Yes. Awful. She is disgusting and, and she, perverse. And she's no different from the priest that dress up. <laughs> no different from anybody else. In I, I mean, in I, this I, I, said that I said this before and I will say this because I do believe this. It may be just one of those priests was sleeping with this woman. Possibly. I mean, it may know. just be because yeah. why would they know, even catch this woman in, her very, in the very act? Why? Well, what makes me laugh, Raymond, is when they've all gone, and they've all left and they've all carried their sin away with them. Instead of exposing their own sin, they were happy to expose her sin. Exactly. Happy to reveal her perverse, yes, the whole world, wicked, how awful she is. Yeah. But they were not willing to say to Jesus, you what know, Jesus, me, Jesus, I came here today to kill. I came here today to stone in the name of the Lord. I came here to uphold Moses' law and put this woman to death. But you know what? I've done the same thing. I've, I've harmed others. I've not loved my neighbour as I've loved myself. I've stolen. I've done all kinds of things, Jesus. Could you help me? But no, they all left. 
They all walked away. Walk away from the life. The person who's left is the woman. And Jesus actually asks her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee. And I believe you said in other parts of this message mm. that there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh but after the spirit. Who is condemning you for your sin? Nobody. Because nobody can condemn you Absolutely. for your sin. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus already set you free. All the people who left before we close mm. all the people who left had the same opportunity as that woman to be free from sin. Mm. To find out how to be, to be free. free from sin. But they Think didn't. of it. Jesus said to her, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go. Go and sin no more. Because Jesus wrote on her heart. Every single one of those persons that was there could have gone with and words. sinned no more. But they all left. With their their conscience. Remember we talked about in the last message. Do not trust Yourself. your own self. Don't let your own conscience. We see they have been tricked by their own self because they, this woman's sin was exposed. So then she had to, she had everybody know already. So she come to Jesus. But the thing about it, when you are saying to yourself that I am a good person, that I open this to say, when you actually look at your sin to say you are fine and you've been, because we've been told that we are nice people, you know, we've been told that all our lives. And when you've been, tell, you've been told that, that is embedded in your life, that you are a good person. And then you feel like, no, I'm not like them sinners. Especially if you go to church on Sunday and you just, you know, in your suit and boot and you look nice and, you know, everybody make, and the church have a way to make you feel proud. I tell you that. But, you know, when, you, when all of that there and you feel like you're on your way to heaven. But, you know, it takes Jesus to point out to your innermost being and say, listen, you're only covering up that leprosy, you know. Because you only come here on Sundays just to cover up the, the problem that is in you. In the week, I've seen the computer history, what you've been searching. In the week, I see the show you've been watching. In the week, I, see, I watch your heart and see where your heart is. I've heard the language you've and been speaking. Exactly. Now, all you do, but on Sunday morning, you dress up that leprosy. And come, and come here, because that makes you feel good. It makes you feel like, oh, I'm on my way to heaven, but you are being deceived. You need to come to me personally, you because, know, and let me take that sin away from you. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, Behold, your own sin shall find you out. And for many people today, they don't realize that one day, it is their own sin that is going to expose them for what they really are. Yeah. On Judgment Day, many people believe that the devil will be there with a pitchfork to prod them and to, te and to torture them and torment them. And these things came out of the dark ages where people were trying to frighten people into, you know, wanting to go to church. This exactly. was the way to try to do this. But I just want to let you know, the devil will not be accusing you on the Day of Judgment. He's doing it now. Nobody will be accusing you on the day of judgment. The only person that will be accusing you Jesus. is your own sin. And you're going to be the, right before Jesus. Your life that you've lived, what you have done, is what's going to reveal itself and say, this is the life. So I'm just going to read that from Revelation. And then before you, before you say that, because Jesus... Yeah, because there's this kind of a... Yeah, Jesus, this thing remember where people believe... That the devil will come, Jesus will And, 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 and that, that, that is in everybody's yeah. mind. But, but you something see, else is you, what you've done. What yourself, you've done is going to is come going you. to be revealed. Everything that you've done in darkness, that hid in your heart, in that dark place, yeah. is going to reveal in that light. When you stand before Jesus, what is that that light is gonna shine in your heart. And it's <laughs> really? gonna say, What have you done? This is your life. Light has come into the world. Man choose darkness rather than light. Because this is a judgment. Because the Bible talks about this is a judgment. 
Light has come into this world. Yes. Man choose darkness rather than light right. because their ways are evil. Yeah. So I'll just read it because read I thought it, it was really close, yeah. I thought it was interesting. It said, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. This is Revelation chapter 20. And obviously anybody read the whole chapter. We said, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are. And they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right. So this delusion that the devil has a job of torturing people and prodding them with a, a fork and roasting them in hell. He is the one roasting mm. in, the, in the lake of fire. Mm. He's already in there. The false mm. prophet is already in there. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that one is in there. They're already in there getting dealt with by God. Then it said, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And I believe you were talking about Jesus just now. Mm -hmm. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And I'll just tell you to know right now, it is your own sin. Those people walked away from Jesus with their own sin and their own sin is what's going to destroy them and it's your own sin that you walk away from Jesus with which you carry around which when Jesus come that you can be who can be free from sin anyone and everyone can be free from sin in Jesus Christ Amen. and as we we closing as Rome um, Revelation chapter 8 said I read that um, read about the book of life Yep. And entering by the gate. Yes. They eat from the tree of life. Yeah. Revelation right. 22. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So from that tree of life, which is Jesus Christ, when they you can eat live. from that, you can live. You can live. Life. But in, Revel in this revelation that you just read, you talk about the, 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 the book of life. Yeah. Because if you eat from Jesus, your name will be written in that book. Yeah. There's, and it's quite interesting that there's no place for them. And we need to think about it. We do. There is no place in the book for them. There's no place for them. You know, no, no, no. And I'm just thinking, hold on. On earth here, is there any place for you where truth is concerned? Is there any place for you where righteousness is concerned? Do you really love God? And we know that if you love God, you keep his commandments. So if you ain't keeping God's commandments, and if you're not following after truth, and you're not seeking God with all your heart, don't be fooled. Because just like how you don't obey God and keep God's commandment, and you don't seek to follow after truth, there is no place. You're saying, I don't have any place for God. That's what you're saying. Whilst God wants to come in your heart, you're saying, I don't have any place for God. But it's the same way it's going to turn on your head. In that day, when the book is open, oh, you did not have any place for me on earth. Now, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me what to drink. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was outside in the cold, the word of God, and you didn't take me in. There is still no place here for you. It's simple, brethren. If you don't serve God here now, you think you're going to serve him in the sweet by and by? It ain't working. You need to do it now. I mean... You know, Raymond, I'm going to say this is my last part. That in John 8, verse 12, Jesus said, it says, Then Jesus, and then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Of life. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word again. Thank you. Help us, Lord God, seal these words upon our hearts as 
We use the instruments of our mouth, our lips, to speak your word. And while speaking them, Lord, we are being challenged ourselves. Father, thank you for your faithfulness of your word. And help us, O oh God, not to forget them. Help us to keep reading and teaching your word and remain in your glory. Because this is our satisfaction to do the will of the Father. I pray, God, that people who listen these words, which is not our words, but yours, they will be challenged to seek you with all their hearts. In Jesus' name. Father, I just pray that you would allow us and encourage us and strengthen us to walk in your light and not in darkness. In Jesus' name I ask this, Lord. Amen. Amen.